Hi everyone. How's it going today? I hope you're all doing well and feeling good. It's always a pleasure to have you with me on my channel. As usual, I will discuss some topics that you might like. I understand that the quality of this video might not be the best, but I hope that the content is still understandable and informative. If you're interested in learning more, I also have a Telegram channel where I share various information that I can't post here. And make sure to subscribe to my backup YouTube channel in case of unforeseen events. So, without further ado, fasten your pants and let's get started. For many years, I've forecasted that the US will evolve into a police state, that it will begin slowly. Then as more and more freedoms are removed, the creation of the police state will accelerate. We're now seeing that acceleration, as more and more Americans are detained, questioned, and having their property confiscated than ever before. As an example, recently, some 20,000 travelers, in and out of the US, were stopped, often at random. Typically, their baggage was searched, their documents photocopied, access codes to their electronic devices demanded, and their files copied. In most cases, no explanation was given, but they were advised that if the search was refused, they would be detained indefinitely. The following year, the numbers of people detained rose by 50% to 30,000. It's important to note that the travelers were not threatened with arrest, which suggests that the authorities were working on the basis that the Patriot Act of 2001 allows all of those activities, without cause being given, without a warrant being obtained, without access to a phone call or legal representation being allowed, and that the individuals in question may be detained indefinitely. This, of course, is in direct violation of the Fourth Amendment to the Constitution, which states that people have the right to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects, against unreasonable searches and seizures. However, when people travel, they are particularly vulnerable, so, the travelers in question are extremely unlikely to refuse. They understand that, indefinitely means, until a Supreme Court ruling is passed, overturning the Patriot Act is unconstitutional. If it hasn't happened yet, and isn't under consideration, it's safe to say, that the level of police state allowed under the Patriot Act, is permanent. Before I continue the video, please give a like if you learned something. Also, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell, so you won't miss any update. Finally, watch until the end to avoid any misunderstanding. Thank you. Police states have been implemented countless times throughout history. They tend to be most prominent where collectivism has already been instituted. Wherever collectivism is already firmly established, new crackdowns are generally introduced suddenly. In Germany, in 1938, under existing Nazi rule, Kristallnacht took people by complete surprise. Later, in 1961, under existing Soviet rule, the Berlin Wall went up with no previous announcement. In both cases, the collectivist tyranny was already in place, and the people had already successfully been subjugated. These events were merely further losses of freedom. But what of a country that still enjoys a few of its former freedoms, and is in the process of being transformed into a full-blown collectivist state? Well, in such cases, the loss of freedoms is often done in slow-mo. Another way of describing this is the old adage of boiling a frog. Since a frog will jump out of a pot of hot water, place him in a pot of lukewarm water, and slowly turn up the heat. Before he knows it, he's being boiled to death. Likewise, when the intention is to convert a country to collectivism, make the early changes in stages. Get the people to accept that the losses of freedom are for the benefit of their safety. Then, the further along you go, the more you can accelerate the process. At present, a majority of Americans appear to now understand that they've experienced a significant loss of their guaranteed freedoms. They're now worried, and, at each new stage of oppression, they tend to say, I'm not happy about this, but I can probably live with it, and, besides, they say that they're doing it for my own safety. However, I think that it's safe to say that a family returning from a holiday that's just been isolated from each other, interrogated separately, frisked, had all their belongings poured through, and copies of their papers and electronic files taken, without even being told the reason, does not feel as though it's been done for their safety. 
Remember, those 30,000 people were just hoping to reach their destination with no trouble from anyone. A generation ago, they never would have tolerated such a violation to their rights. But now, they submit and accept whatever they're told to do. But, upon release, they most likely assumed that the authorities had been looking for something specific. They were not. In recent years, there have been very few actual prosecutions from such Gestapo-like shakedowns, in spite of the copying of documents and confiscation of minor items. The object here is, not to prosecute anyone, it is to teach people to submit. This will be important later on. What we're witnessing is, a loss of freedom in slow-mo. Just as Germans stood by and accepted Kristallnacht, just as they stood by and watched the Berlin Wall be built that would close off their freedom of migration, the great majority of Americans ultimately will stand by and watch the last of their freedoms be removed, because they've already been trained to submit to whatever indignities and restrictions are placed upon them. After World War II, Lutheran pastor Martin Niemöller was questioned as to how he and other Germans could possibly have simply stood by and watched as freedoms were removed, resulting eventually in total domination of the German people. He said. First, they came for the socialists, and I did not speak out because I was not a socialist. Then, they came for the trade unionists, and I did not speak out because I was not a trade unionist. Then they came for the Jews, and I did not speak out because I was not a Jew. Then, they came for me, and there was no one left to speak for me. Pastor Niemöller was able to make that statement in 1976, as he was one of the few survivors of the concentration camps. But, in addition to that insight, there's another very significant lesson to be learned here. Historically, whenever a government is instituting the transition into a collectivist state, one of the early warnings is, a limitation on travel outside the country, getting the people used to the idea that they don't have a right to leave. The US has now reached that point. The next development will be to teach them that, by traveling outside of the country, they are automatically suspect. The implication will be money laundering. Whether it's accomplished through the use of a physical barrier, such as a wall, or through the intimidation of random searches and interrogations, as is presently underway in the US, or whether it's simply the appearance of armed guards in ports of exit, the objective is not to obtain copies of your emails to your friends, or to go through socks in your luggage. It's to teach you that your rights have been lost, and you are expected to submit to any and all indignities and restrictions imposed on you. Now, it's time for me to hear from you. What are your thoughts on this video? If you found it interesting or informative, please consider giving it a thumbs up and sharing it with your friends and family. Remember, the more people know about these important topics, the better. Before we wrap up, I want to extend a huge thank you to all the individuals who dedicated their time and energy to research and gather the information presented in this video. Their efforts are truly commendable, and have helped shed light on important topics that affect us all. Make sure to hit the subscribe button, and turn on notifications to be notified when the next video is uploaded. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.